In Egypt, scientists have discovered things they tag as untouched miracles while looking for the tomb of Cleopatra, the legendary pharaoh of Egypt. This discovery has baffled researchers and scientists as old facts and tradition of ancient Egyptian burial and art have been brought to light. Well, be prepared to be astonished as we take you through 20 horrifying discoveries in ancient Egyptian tombs surrounding Cleopatra, the legendary Egyptian queen. Number 20. Mummy with Painted Face Imagine you're among the archaeologists excavating a tomb. While digging, you suddenly see a pair of eyes staring right back at you. Now, isn't that terrifying? That's what happened to archaeologists who were excavating in the Fayum Basin, a region southwest of Cairo. In this location, they discovered the Fayum mummy portraits, and they're exactly what they sound like. These portraits were drawn after the mummies were buried in the tomb. These portraits date back to the Roman occupation of Egypt, around the 1st century BCE to the 3rd century CE, and are one of the most significant discoveries in the region. You see, these portraits weren't simply placed in the tombs. Instead, they were attached to the mummy's outer wrappings, covering the face of the deceased. The Egyptians believed in preserving the body and providing a likeness to ensure the soul's survival in the afterlife, while the Romans valued realistic portrayals in their art. And these stunning, lifelike paintings are the result of this belief. For artists in the audience, I know you might be curious about what the ancient Egyptians used to achieve these colors and how these portraits endured the test of time. Archaeologists believed that the painters of these portraits used the encaustic technique, where pigments were mixed with hot beeswax, or sometimes tempera, which uses egg as a binder. This method allowed for vibrant colors and incredible durability, which is why many of the portraits have survived in such good condition for over 2,000 years. Number 19. Seti I. Seti I, the father of Ramses the Great, was a ruler who left a significant mark on Egypt, both through his military conquests and his monumental constructions. Among the most significant discoveries in ancient Egypt is his tomb, known as KV-17 in the Valley of the Kings. Giovanni Battista Belzoni discovered the tomb on October 16, 1817, and to this day, it stands as one of the most lavishly decorated and largest ever constructed. It was designed to ensure his journey to the afterlife was as glorious as his reign over Egypt. The tomb is a marvel of ancient architecture and artistry, covered floor to ceiling with intricate murals and reliefs depicting various deities and astronomical motifs, illustrating the ancient Egyptians' deep connection to the cosmos and their gods. Beltsoni's discovery revealed not just the physical remains of Seti, I, but also a cultural treasure trove that offers insight into the beliefs and values of the time. Unfortunately, the tomb suffered from both the ravages of time and human interference. Beltsoni himself, in his efforts to uncover and remove artifacts, inadvertently caused damage to this magnificent site. Seti I's mummy, found in 1881 in the Deir el-Bahari cache, is among the best-preserved examples of royal mummies from ancient Egypt. This discovery was pivotal, offering scholars a tangible connection to the past. Despite the passage of millennia, the mummy's condition has provided invaluable information about the pharaoh's appearance and health. Studies have suggested that Seti I died unexpectedly around the age of 40, although the exact cause of his death remains a mystery. It's speculated that he may have suffered from a condition that affected his heart. His mummy is still among the most horrifying-looking ones ever found in Egyptian tombs. Number 18. Mummy Medicine Now, when we think of medicine, ancient mummies aren't exactly the first thing that comes to mind, right? But back then, the question wasn't should you eat human flesh? But rather, what sort of flesh should you eat? Yep, I know, this is just one of the many weird periods in history. Initially, Egyptian mummies were the answer. At the height of Egyptomania, Europeans in the Middle Ages, desperate for the healing properties they believed came from the ancient land, turned to mummies as a source of medicine. This practice was spurred by a linguistic mix-up, where mumia, a Persian term for bitumen, was confused with the preserved flesh of mummies. Europeans observed a black resin coating the mummies, which looked similar to bitumen used for medicinal purposes. They assumed that the mummies had healing properties, leading to a trend where mummies were sought not only for their bitumen coating but also for their flesh. The flesh was ground into powder and believed to offer consumers divine protection. In fact, in the ancient world, bitumen was also used for various applications, including embalming by medieval Persian physicians, as a salve for cuts and bruises, and even internal medicine for ulcers and tuberculosis. The demand for this mumia surged in Europe, especially during the Crusades, as soldiers returned home with tales of its extraordinary healing powers. However, as the supply of genuine mummies dwindled, European apothecaries began to get creative, substituting genuine mummies with products made from fresh human meat. 
Yes, you heard that right. Eating fresh flesh became a fad, with many believing that these remains possessed more life-giving properties than the ancient, desiccated mummies that had been sitting in tombs for centuries. But, as with many peculiar practices of the past, the tide eventually turned. By the 18th century, the use of human meat, mummified or otherwise, as a cure-all began to fall out of fashion in Europe. Mummy parts became a rarer sight on medicine shelves, though the Western obsession with Egypt persisted. I guess this is another reason to be thankful for our advancement in science and medicine. Number 17. Bizarre Lineage Now, here's something horrifying that we only found out through studying what we found in ancient Egyptian tombs. In ancient Egypt, especially among the royal families, marrying within the family, including siblings, was common and often encouraged. Yep, you heard that right. However, this practice is not only frowned upon today but it's also, quite frankly, borderline illegal. In ancient Egypt, that wasn't the case. Now, you might be wondering why would they marry their siblings? Well, it boils down to a few key reasons largely centered around religious beliefs, political strategy, and social structure. The ancient Egyptians had a profound reverence for their gods and their royal lineage, which they believed was divine. The pharaoh, considered a god in human form, was at the top of this divine hierarchy. To maintain the purity of this divine bloodline, pharaohs often married their siblings. This practice ensured that the royal blood remained uncontaminated by outsiders, keeping the lineage as pure and as powerful as possible. The idea was that by marrying within the family, they emulated the gods themselves, many of whom were believed to have married their siblings. For example, the most famous sibling marriage was between Cleopatra VII and her younger brother, Ptolemy XIII, which was more of a political alliance than a romantic union. This practice wasn't limited to just Cleopatra. It was a common theme throughout Egypt's dynastic history. But how did the general population view this? Surprisingly, sibling marriage was not widely practiced among the common people of ancient Egypt. While marriage between cousins was common, marriages as close as brother and sister were generally reserved for the royal family. After all, for the average Egyptian, marriage choices were likely more about practical alliances and family connections than about emulating divine incest. Number 16. The Screaming Mummy in the vast necropolis of Deir el-Bahari, nestled in the Theban hills, archaeologists stumbled upon a site that would scare anyone. Among the many mummies of pharaohs and nobles was a mummy with an eternal expression of agony, with its mouth wide open as if caught in an eternal scream. This is the screaming mummy, known officially as Unknown man -E. Now, what makes the screaming mummy so intriguing and a bit disturbing isn't just the haunting expression but the circumstances surrounding its mummification and burial that perplexed historians and scientists. The screaming mummy's tomb was found not in a royal tomb but in a cache known as DB320, alongside other royal mummies, suggesting that he was of significant status. However, unlike the others, this mummy was not lovingly prepared for the afterlife. The body was wrapped in sheepskin, which, in ancient Egyptian culture, was considered unclean and could imply punishment or disgrace. What's more, the mummy's hands and feet were bound, and there were no inscriptions to identify who this person was or why he was buried in such a manner. These clues hinted at a story of intrigue, possibly a tale of treason or a plot against the pharaoh, leading to a punishment that extended beyond death. Scientific examination revealed more about the screaming mummy's final moments. Tests indicated that the person died in their forties and had been poisoned, possibly forced to ingest a deadly substance. This manner of death, combined with the mummy's condition and burial method, suggests that this was more than just a punishment. It was a deliberate act to deny them a peaceful afterlife, a severe sentence in ancient Egyptian belief. But who was this person? Some theories suggest he might be Prince Pentaware, involved in the infamous harem conspiracy against Ramses III. The prince was convicted of plotting to murder his father, a crime that would certainly warrant such a notorious punishment. However, the screaming mummy's facial expression, often attributed to the agony or perhaps the horror of his final moments, is actually more likely a result of the mummification process. After death, if the jaw is not strapped shut, it will fall open due to gravity, leading to the appearance of a scream. However, this doesn't diminish the eerie impact of the discovery. Number 15. The Devourer of Hearts Amit is among the gods that archaeologists encountered in ancient Egyptian sites. The goddess, known as the Devourer of Hearts, lived in the Egyptian underworld, do it, and her role in the afterlife was crucial, yet terrifying. She wasn't worshipped like other deities. In fact, Egyptians feared her, for she was the final judge of one's heart and the embodiment of divine retribution. Now, imagine that you passed away and find yourself in the Hall of Mott, 
where your heart is weighed on a scale against the feather of Mott, the goddess of truth, justice, and harmony. On one side, your heart symbolizes your soul and all your earthly deeds. On the other, the feather represents truth, harmony, and balance. This ceremony is overseen by Osiris, the lord of the underworld, and a panel of 42 judges. Here's where Amit comes in. She's a terrifying mix of three animals considered the most dangerous to Egyptians. The lion, the hippopotamus, and the crocodile. With a lion's front, a hippo's back, and a crocodile's head, she sat ready to pounce at the edge of the scale. If your heart was found to be heavier than the feather, filled with sin and imbalance, it meant you failed the test. Amit would then devour your heart, causing you to cease to exist for eternity. This was the worst possible outcome for the Egyptians, who believed strongly in the afterlife and the soul's eternal journey. Amit's presence served as a moral compass for the ancient Egyptians, reminding them to lead a life of truth, balance, and righteousness. Her image was a powerful symbol of the consequences of failing to uphold Mott's principles. What's bizarre, however, is the fact that there are no temples dedicated to Amit, no cult following her. Her representation is found in funerary texts and tombs, serving as a reminder of the afterlife's judgment process. Despite her fearsome role, Amit was also seen as a protector of the universal order by preventing the unworthy from entering the afterlife. Number 14. The Book of Thoth. The Book of Thoth, this legendary book, is shrouded in mysticism and has fascinated scholars, magicians, and historians for centuries. Despite its name, the Book of Thoth is not a single book but rather refers to a collection of ancient Egyptian texts believed to have been written by Thoth, the Egyptian god of writing, knowledge, and wisdom. Thoth was often depicted as a man with the head of an ibis or a baboon, animals sacred to him, and he played a crucial role in the Egyptian pantheon, embodying intellect and serving as the mediator between good and evil. Number 13. Pickled Fetus. In 2021, researchers from the Warsaw Mummy Project in Poland released a paper announcing the discovery of the first pregnant mummy, known as the Mysterious Lady. The mummy dates back to the first century BC and, strangely enough, she was found in the coffin that supposedly belonged to a male Egyptian priest. Thanks to the marvels of modern science, specifically decomposition and mummification techniques, the fetus inside the mummy was essentially pickled. This term, while a bit unusual, accurately describes the process where the fetus was preserved in a highly acidic environment within its mother's womb. This environment dissolved its bones but kept the soft tissue intact, much like a bog body or a vinegar-soaked egg that retains its internal structure despite the shell dissolving. Well, isn't that spooky? Interestingly, scientists are unsure why the ancient Egyptians chose to leave the fetus inside the mummy while removing other organs, a common practice in mummification. This choice might have been due to the fetus developmental stage or possibly for religious reasons. Number 12. Book of the Dead. Just like the Book of Thoth, the Book of the Dead isn't a single, uniform document. Instead, it's a compilation of texts that evolved over time, from the Old Kingdom's pyramid texts to the coffin texts of the Middle Kingdom, and finally into the form we're familiar with from the New Kingdom onwards. Each version served a critical role in the spiritual journey of the dead, offering knowledge and spells necessary for navigating the afterlife and achieving eternal life amongst the gods. Remember, despite our perceived notion about death, this book is actually not seen as something creepy, or at least the ancient Egyptians didn't see it as something foreboding. For them, this book was a source of comfort and guidance for the deceased, ensuring their eternal happiness and reunion with loved ones in the field of reeds, a perfect reflection of their earthly life. Number 11. The Hidden Chambers of the Great Pyramid The Great Pyramid, standing tall for over 4,500 years, is no stranger to mysteries. Constructed around 2560 BC under the reign of Pharaoh Khufu, it's captivated the imagination of many with its intricate design and the unknowns lurking within its massive stone blocks. Fast forward to 2023, and researchers are still uncovering its secrets. This time, it revealed a secret chamber, a corridor that's 30 feet long, right above the structure's main entrance. The newly discovered corridor was identified by an international team of researchers from Egypt, France, and Japan as part of the Scan Pyramids project. They've been using cutting-edge, non-invasive techniques like infrared thermography and cosmic ray imaging since 2015 to peek inside the pyramid without disturbing its structure. Their efforts revealed this corridor and hinted at the potential for even more hidden spaces. But what's the purpose of this corridor? Well, we don't know yet, but we're hoping to find out in the future. Number 10. The Curse of King Tutankhamun In 1922, Howard Carter, alongside his financier Lord Carnarvon, 
unlocked the secrets of King Tutankhamun's tomb, igniting the modern era of Egyptology. This discovery, while monumental, also sparked rumors of a deadly curse that would befall those who dared disturb the boy king's eternal slumber. The cursed phenomena really took off after the unfortunate death of Lord Carnarvon, who died from poisoning caused by an infected mosquito bite just a few months after the tomb's opening. This event, coupled with the death of Carter's canary by a cobra, an animal considered an Egyptian royal symbol, fueled the local and international rumor mill, with newspapers and personalities of the time adding their own speculative spins to the story. But was there any truth to this curse? For some, it's nothing but a way to prevent tomb raiders from entering the tomb. However, some truly believed that the ancient Egyptians imbued power to the eternal chambers of their rulers. Number 9. Mummified Crocodiles In 2019, archaeologists at Kubit el Hawa, a necropolis on the western bank of the Nile River, discovered unexpected mummies, a cache of mummified crocodiles. Among the mummified remains were five heads and five more or less complete bodies, with most being over 2,500 years old. Researchers claimed that these mummies were naturally preserved, the remains of the animals naturally dried out, likely buried in sand pits before being moved to their final resting place in the tomb around the 5th century BC. These reptiles varied in size from 6 to 11.5 feet, showcasing two different species, the Nile crocodile and the West African crocodile. This variation underscores the diversity of life among the Nile River thousands of years ago. Now, mummies are very common, especially in ancient Egypt. However, these animal remains were preserved for a different purpose. They were preserved to be sacrificed to Sobuk, the crocodile-headed god. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Sobuk is associated with water, fertility, and the power of the pharaohs. What's more, crocodiles were also highly revered in ancient Egypt, symbolizing both the dangers and the protections offered by the Nile River. By offering these mighty creatures to Sobuk, the Egyptians hoped to appease the god and secure his favor for the pharaohs and themselves. Number 8. Mummy with a Golden Tongue Recently, archaeologists began discovering 2,000-year-old mummies with golden tongues while excavating in Alexandria, Egypt. While this practice is creepy, archaeologists believed they served a great purpose. The gold tongue, crafted from gold foil, was likely placed in the mummy's mouth to ensure the deceased could speak in the afterlife, especially to Osiris, the Egyptian god of the underworld. In ancient Egypt, gold was not only a symbol of wealth but also had divine associations, believed to ensure the deceased's ability to breathe, eat, and speak in the afterlife. This specific ritual is mentioned in the Book of the Dead. Number 7. The Black Sarcophagus Now, we all know about the alleged curse of Tutankhamun. It was said that those who excavated his tomb suffered from a curse. However, this is not verified. Even so, the thought of excavating tombs became frightening to many. Perhaps that's why, when they discovered this mysterious black sarcophagus in Alexandria, Egypt, many were horrified, believing a curse would soon be unleashed. This massive 30-ton granite coffin sparked wild internet speculation when it was found. Contrary to rumors of curses or the tomb of Alexander the Great inside, were three human bodies and some intriguing artifacts, including a woman and two men, one of whom survived ancient brain surgery. Among the findings were small gold artifacts, suggesting associations with death, rebirth, and possibly the goddess Isis. This discovery dates back to either the Ptolemaic or Roman periods, adding a fascinating layer to our understanding of ancient Egyptian burial practices. So, no curses were unleashed, but it was definitely a significant find. Number 6. The Golden Boy the Golden Boy isn't what it sounds like. It's a mummy discovered in a tomb in southern Egypt in 1916. The Golden Boy was a high-status teenager who lived during Egypt's Ptolemaic period, a time when Greek and Egyptian cultures merged. At the heart of his burial were 49 protective amulets, many crafted from gold, strategically placed on and inside his body to ensure a safe and prosperous journey through the afterlife. These amulets encompass 21 distinct types including a golden tongue amulet placed inside the mouth and a golden heart amulet nestled within the chest cavity. Again, the golden tongue was believed to allow the boy to speak in the afterlife, while the golden heart was meant to silence his heart during the final judgment, ensuring it wouldn't speak against him. The CT scans, which allowed researchers to digitally unwrap the mummy, provided a fascinating glimpse into ancient Egyptian burial practices and beliefs about death and the afterlife. For instance, the golden scarab beetle amulet was positioned inside the chest to substitute for the heart if the body was ever deprived of this organ, embodying the belief that the heart must not bear witness against the deceased during Judgment Day. The meticulous arrangement of the amulets in three columns within and around the body, 
along with other burial items like a gilded mask, sandals, and a wreath of ferns, underscore the ancient Egyptians' elaborate rituals to protect and guide the deceased into the afterlife. The sandals, in particular, were symbolic, intended to allow the spirit of the teen to walk out of his coffins, pious and clean, towards his final destination. He was laid to rest inside two coffins, the outer one adorned with Greek inscriptions and an inner wooden sarcophagus, signifying his socio-economic status. Despite the grandeur of his burial, the exact cause of his death remains a mystery, with researchers estimating he was around 14 to 15 years old at the time of his passing. It's time for today's subscriber pick. Archaeologists recently discovered a new tomb in Egypt's necropolis. What they discovered in Egyptian tombs alarmed the scientific community. During an excavation, archaeologists discovered a tomb filled with treasure. However, the story goes that, after finding the tomb, the ones who first examined the site fell ill. Did they contract a disease buried along with a mummy, a curse, or was it something else? Well, scientists are quite worried, but it's definitely not because of a curse. You see, it was quite common for people during ancient times to protect the tombs of their rulers. After all, these tombs contain their king's earthly treasures. To ensure that no tomb raiders would try to disturb their eternal slumber, they used a wide variety of deflectors, from cursed text, a moat filled with mercury, or poison. That's why, along with the possibility of an ancient disease returning, there's also the risk of coming into contact with an unknown substance. Being an archaeologist sounds like an exciting and dreamy job, until you're faced with such risks. Number 5. Professional Mourners Did you know that, in ancient Egypt, there were professional mourners in tombs? Yep, mourning could get you paid or fed at the time. Professional mourners, also known as moralists, were an integral part of funerary rites, especially in ancient Egypt. Their role was not just to grieve, but to perform a highly symbolic function during the funeral processions. In Egypt, this profession was exclusively female, believed because it was considered improper for men to publicly express grief through tears. These women mourners played crucial roles in embodying the goddesses Isis and Nephthys during the burial rites. They were required to be childless, remove their body hair, and bore tattoos of the goddesses' names on their shoulders. Their presence at a funeral was deemed essential to the ritual's completion, standing at opposite ends of the deceased's body to symbolize mourning and protection provided by these divine figures. Number 4. The Spell of the Twelve Caves The Spell of the Twelve Caves is an ancient Egyptian funerary text from the New Kingdom, first found in the tomb of Amenhotep II and inscribed in the Osirian at Abydus under Merneptah classified as spell 168 in some copies of the Book of the Dead. It describes the underworld or duet as divided into twelve caves. Each cave contains groups of deities offering benefits to the deceased soul, aiding their journey through the afterlife. This text reflects the Egyptian belief in a structured and deity-inhabited afterlife. Each cave is said to contain several groups of deities who grant benefits to the soul of a deceased person. I don't know about you, but there's something unnerving and fascinating at the same time about how captivated ancient Egyptians were with death. Number 3. The Mystery of Amenhotep Amenhotep, he's among the most mysterious pharaohs that ruled over ancient Egypt. Now, to avoid confusion, it's crucial to note that there were several pharaohs with the name Amenhotep, but the one that really stands out and has historians scratching their heads is Amenhotep III, also known as Amenhotep the Magnificent. Amenhotep III reigned in a period of unparalleled prosperity and artistic flourish. He was a pharaoh known for his monumental constructions, including the Luxor Temple and significant additions to Karnak. However, the true mystery begins with his successor, Amenhotep IV, who later changed his name to Akhenaten. The reason behind Akhenaten's drastic religious reform remains a topic of intense debate among Egyptologists. Was it a genuine spiritual revelation, a power move to diminish the influence of the powerful priesthood of Ammonius, or something else entirely? But that's not the end of it. You see, Akhenaten is shown with an elongated face, protruding stomach, wide hips, and thin arms, a stark departure from the idealized portrayals of previous pharaohs. This has led to speculation about possible medical conditions or the possibility that he's of extraterrestrial descent, although this claim is largely dismissed. Akhenaten's bizarre appearance has led to theories that persist to this day. Number 2. Servants and Their Masters In ancient times, social class held great significance. And although the social divide is still apparent today, it's not given the same importance as it was in ancient times. If the practices of ancient Egyptians were still followed, servants today would potentially be buried with their masters, or at least that's a practice that the Egyptians may have followed in the past. In ancient Egypt, the social elite, including pharaohs, 
desire to maintain their lifestyle and social status even after death. To achieve this, early dynastic pharaohs engaged in what's known as retainer sacrifices. This meant that servants, along with harem members, minor palace officials, and even animals like dogs, were slain so that they could accompany their masters into the afterlife. This practice was most prevalent during the First Dynasty, around 3100 BC to 2900 BC. It reflected the Egyptians' view of the afterlife as a continuation of earthly life, where social hierarchy and roles were maintained. However, this practice saw a significant change as Egyptian civilization evolved. By the time of the more famous pharaohs, human sacrifices had ceased. Instead, pharaohs were buried with Ashapti figures, small carved servants intended to work for the pharaoh in the afterlife. These figurines were designed to perform various tasks like tilling fields and baking bread, essentially serving as an ancient version of action figures surrounding the tomb and coffin. Interestingly, some of these shaptists were carved with details indicating their specific roles in the afterlife. Regardless, it's still a pretty creepy practice. Number 1. Ginger. Most mummies in ancient Egypt lie in a supine position. Perhaps that's why ginger is so different. Ginger is the name given to a mummy discovered in Jebeline, located about 25 miles south of Thebes. The tomb where ginger was discovered was estimated to be from the pre-dynastic period, around 3400 BCE, and was untouched for over 5,000 years. This was centuries before Egypt became the world-famous civilization of pharaohs and pyramids. Ginger was found in the fetal position, unlike most mummies. However, this wasn't an arbitrary position. It was believed that ginger was deliberately positioned this way to mimic the conditions of the womb, perhaps symbolizing a rebirth into the afterlife. Ginger's position also seemed to tell a lot about his life. You see, he didn't lead an easy life, Studies of his body have revealed that he was a young man at the time of his death, possibly in his early twenties. The cause of death, a wound on his back discovered through modern scanning techniques, suggests he might have been slain, possibly by a stab wound due to a sharp weapon. Despite his grim death, Ginger's grave wasn't bare and seemed of importance. Ginger's grave also contained pottery and other artifacts that offered clues about the diet, technology, and daily life of his time. But now, Ginger's last belongings— along with his mummy, aren't in Egypt anymore but in the British Museum, where all these are displayed. Ancient Egyptians truly were interesting people. If any of you know other shocking facts about this great civilization, feel free to share them in the comments down below. Also, check out our other cool videos showing up on the screen right now, and we'll see you in the next one.